Hello and welcome to Hackerbox's headquarters. Today we're going to have a look at Hackerbox number 0034. Here we go with the box. We have a uh, probably noticing a new uh, box design here this month. Um, actually, you have the uh, name of the box on the side. It's Hackerbox 0034, and the theme is sub gigahertz for uh, sub gigahertz radio or radio under under the uh, frequency range of one gigahertz. And with the new box design, um, some of the information that used to be on an insert card is now actually on the box itself, the information on where to find the box guide and the actual theme of the box. And see we have a lot of radio elements inside the box. Let's pull this out here. Um, first we have a baggie with a software defined radio dongle and an antenna that goes with it. All right, these um, radio dongles have become pretty popular. USB connector on one end and then an RF input on the other end where you can plug in a the um, simple uh, um, quarter wave antenna, that width antenna that comes with it, or you can try some other antenna inputs there. Let's see if we can zoom that up a little better. That looks a little nicer. There we go. And um, you can receive a lot of different um, modulation formats and frequency ranges and filter techniques through the through the various uh, software. There's a um, GNU SDR uh, software and some other open source software that's available for using these um, receivers. So um, we'll see, you can do a lot of really fun things with that. The very simplest thing you can do is just receive um, broadcast FM radio, um, pick up your uh, the little uh, RF uh, car door, car door uh, dongle from your keychain. You can probably notice the transmissions from that on your um, receiver. It's, uh, it's pretty full featured. Um, there's a lot of uh, resources online for for using those. So that will be our first foray into sub gigahertz uh, radio. It's worth pointing out that this um, these receivers actually work well past one gigahertz, but they uh, do break break the theme there a little bit with what can be received by that radio. Right. Um, let's see, another thing from the box here is this is a, a on-the-go or OTG USB cable. Um, so you can plug a USB-A device into there. Um, as one example, you can plug a SDR dongle into there. And then on the other end, there's a micro USB um, port that can, uh, jack that can plug into your tablet or phone. Um, so it basically is a, that, this, this, these two parts right here make up an, uh, what we commonly think of as an on-the-go um, adapter. And then what this additional thing here is called an auxiliary power port. Um, you plug your uh, the power um, supply here that you would usually use to charge the the, mo the mobile device, the tablet or phone you were using on this end. Plug that into here, and that will give extra auxiliary power to this port. For example, you can then power this thing without having it drain off the battery of your tablet. So it's a handy adapter to have. Um, our next... Uh, item here in the sub gigahertz radio. This is a, a an FM transmitter. Some people call this a bug kit. Um, get, it, get it opened up here. Dump out the parts. Alright, so it has a pretty simple PCB and let's move some of the stuff out of the way. This piece of wire is for the antenna. And then it has a microphone for the audio input. And there's a picture in the uh, box guide about um, pointing out that this this um, lead right here that has little traces that connect it to the outside housing, that's the negative lead. 
And you know, when you trim some some of the leads off of another part after you solder it in, let's say for example this resistor, you can then solder that on there and use it use it to mount it on the board, um, or you could use some wire. Uh, there's a little Electret microphone, a pot, and then some headers. And you can see it's a pretty simple circuit here. Um, let's see if we need to zoom on that a little bit. Tell if that's working. Well, that's about as good as it gets. Um, so the circuit uses three transistors. Um, one of them is a uh, part of the the um, carrier oscillator. Uh, for the FM broadcast carrier, which is up around um, uh, defaults to 83 megahertz, and then you can you can change the frequency by on L1, the L1 inductor. There's three inductors. Find the one that's L1. You can space these little windings out a little bit, and that'll um, change the inductance and give you a different frequency. But it'll just default to something around 83, 85 megahertz. Uh, and you can, of course, you can get it up to about 100 megahertz to the higher end of the FM broadcast. And it has, so, so there's a, uh, the middle, you call it the middle stage, the middle um, transistor does um, that carrier oscillator, and then there's a mixer that mixes the audio input from the microphone. Um, you can also put a, a line in, audio in input, if you want to be transmitting something else, if you want to set up a mini pirate radio station or something. And then the last one's a power amplifier to take the, the mixed, um, the modulated carrier, which has been modulated, frequency modulated with the uh, input from the audio input microphone or audio input, and then uh, power amplify it to uh, broadcast on on the antenna. Right. And we've done some antenna projects before, but you know antennas themselves are a whole interesting world to look at. So. And the little um, potentiometer trimmer will let you uh, add a little attenuation to the input if you need to, if you're getting uh, um, overmodulated a little, a little too much on the um, in the mixer. I guess it's not technically a mixer; it's a Frequency frequency modulator. All right, let's just move that aside for a second. Let's see what we have next here in the box. We have a an FM receiver. Of course, we have an FM transmitter. We're going to want an FM receiver. Well, this is still not focusing very well. Let's see. It's a little overexposed. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's all right. Well, um, anyway, it's an FM receiver. It, uh, it can be tuned from 76 to 108 megahertz. Um, it's based on a chip called the HEX 3653, which is highly integrated. So you'll see there really isn't that much from a, a radio perspective to um to see with what's going on in the kit. Let me open it up here. I'm gonna dump it into this. This bag, and we can lay it out. Hold on. There we go. Um, so <clears throat> it's powered by a um, by two AA batteries, and again, just like the, the the transmitter, it has a little PCB and then components to go on it. But there are not really all that many components here. When it, when you come down to it, it's mostly just this little hex. It's called a HEX 3653 integrated um, FM receiver. So. Um, and there are some buttons for scanning the frequency up and down, changing the volume, turning the power on. This is the uh, headphone output, 3.5 millimeter. There's a um, crystal oscillator reference. Um, there are some header pins and a little jumper that can be used to switch uh, the antenna source. You can put an external antenna on this little uh, via here that says A, or you can use the headphone cable as an antenna. So the switch lets you decide between those. And other than that, there's just a few few resistors. There's this big inductor here, a couple capacitors, and there's a power LED. So because it because it's so integrated into that uh, that hex uh, the the um, hex three six five three chip, it's pretty um pretty limited in how many components you need, which is Fairly nice. 
let's see what else we have in here. This uh, nine volt battery clip is uh, one option for providing power to the um, FM transmitter. Um, the FM transmitter will operate on, I believe, anything from about three to nine volts. So nine, this nine, nine volt battery is an easy way to, uh, to do that. Or, um, you know, if you have another one of these uh, pretty common um, AA battery holders, you could use something like that. <clears throat> All right, so another, going back to our box here, we have a, a little, um, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of radio humor there. There's a, a tank resonant circuit, and it says it's uh, so sexy it hurts. Um, yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty comedy, comedy rich there. Almost looks like it might be from Hertz Rent-A-Car, the yellow and black color, so. All right, that's fun. And, um... All right, and then our, I guess you might want to call this, depending on whether you are uh, more excited about the uh, the SDR receiver or, or this. I was about to say this was the star of the show, but I think the SDR receiver might be pretty fun too. This is uh, a little, oh, this is a double kit of the um, of CC stick. It has two CC stick um, kits in it, basically. Uh, Let's see if we can get it centered here so we can see it all together. And here, let me, um, so what these are, is these are the, these little radio modules are CC1101 transceivers, which are a Texas instrument radio transceiver that can operate over a wide range of frequencies, sub gigahertz. They actually call it their low power sub gigahertz transceiver. Um, and it comes with a little rubber ducky antenna on an SMA, SMA coax. So, um, so there's one of those, and then there is an Arduino. This happens to be a Pro Micro, and very importantly, this is a Pro Micro 3.3 volt. So um, we've used the 5 volt um, pretty recently. I think it was in the uh, HackerBox number 0029. The Field Kit um, HackerBox had a uh, 5 volt Pro Micro. It is not the same thing. This um, the uh, CC1101. Uh, Texas Instrument radio chip will only work at 3.3 volts, so um, do not use the other one of these you might have that is a 5 volt version. And uh, also make sure you tell the IDE under the board selection that you're using the 3.3 volt version because it will, these, um, unfortunately, the Pro Micros, the, uh, um, what is it called, the, uh, uh, the AVR chip that's on it will brick if you um, try to program it from the IDE using the wrong settings, okay? Um, I actually think it will program once and then it will brick itself. So, uh, so it's pretty fun here. Let's get there, there, there's two of these um, CC sticks in here, the parts that make up a CC stick, so that you can use one as transmit and receive or some other um, setup that you might want. But let's see how those go together here. Let's, uh, let's, let's open up one of these. Oh, I have another one here. Another um, here's a Pro Micro that's already. Has its uh, terminals, the header soldered onto it. And let's break out one of these. If you ever have any of these little types of things right here, you can. They come off pretty easy, easily with a. And sometimes you can just force them down on the table like that, and they'll snap off. Well, doesn't want to do that right now, or just grab it with a pair of pliers and pop it off there like that. Those are the little tabs. These things are made panelized in a, in a larger panel. Um, and the little tabs are just how they're connected together. So. But once you get one all cleaned up, you can see how the, the um, uh, so these are the three parts that make up one CC stick. And what you want to do is take the CC stick interface board, which is really just inter, inter wires together the pins on the other two modules, and get, get the paint side up, the silk screen side up, and then you can see that the Pro Micro goes into one side, and the CC1101 radio module goes into the other side, like that. And through the magic of television, we already have one in the oven. Um, you know, it looks like that in the end. It's pretty, pretty simple to solder up, just to solder up all the headers, and, and there it goes. And here is its partner, and this one's on a, you can see it actually, if you stick a USB cable into it, it actually is very stick-like, stick the CC stick, as it were. 
and um, and they work pretty well. There, uh, the box guide has a link to the Elect House um, library for using the uh, CC1101 uh, chip. It's quite a simple example. Uh, just uses one default um, frequency and uh, modulation scheme, and so it's it's pretty easy. The you know the um, uh, sketch level code for it is quite easy to access and to try out. So that, that's probably a good place to start with. And then if you want to try some different modulation techniques, you know, that's very cool. And of course, when you're, if you're only using one of these, um, as, and you're only transmitting, of course you can receive the signal using the, um, SDR receiver, which is, which is interesting. There's a lot of, um, uh, experimenting that can be done with different, um, frequencies and encoding methods and modulation techniques and, and things like that. The, uh, you know, like most areas of electronics, radio is, uh, it is a, it's a very deep rabbit hole. There's a lot of different um, things to discover about about radio, even um, you know these uh, very low power uh, transmitters. So the trade-off with these things being, you know, at a at a, at a lower frequency, um, <clears throat> you know, they don't work at the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz like a uh, like our Wi-Fi might. Is that they they have really good uh, distance propagation. So these will work up to you know, I think you can even get like a couple hundred meters out of them, but um, they'll easily go over a hundred meters, which is you know pretty pretty nice. And you know you can improve it by using different antennas, by you know increasing the power, lowering the symbol rate, you know adding error correction, things like that. So all of the the, the tools of the uh, available to us in the digital communications realm. Great, that does it for our unboxing video. Um, on Hacker Box number 0034, sub gigahertz radio projects. Um, we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out hackerboxes.com and see all the great um, products and projects and subscription offerings that are available there. You can get a Hacker Box like this delivered right to your mailbox every month, full of electronics projects and gizmos and all sorts of great surprises. So definitely check that out. See you soon.